starting from their birth till 28 days they are all called newborn a very interesting fact for the newborn is at the time of their birth they are very near sighted they are, they can only see the things which are located at the distance of 8 to 12 inches they can only appreciate the color white black and gray even though their birth is always celebrated by pink blue or many other colors welcome back to my channel this video is part 2 of newborn history let's dive in do not skip anything watch till end Hi I am Dr Triya Virani Malde pediatrician and consultant neonatologist I'll be your guide for pediatric subject if you are new to my channel please do subscribe and give like to this video because many thing is going to happen for pediatrics on this channel after having a first set that is a chief complaint in odp we are directly moving to the maternal history and in maternal history first of all we need to know the age of the mother because age of the mother plays very important role if we are having a teenage pregnancy or a elderly prime gravida there are set of the problem in newborn like prematurity iugr and many other complication like chromosomal abnormality in the form of down syndrome could be there then height and weight if mother herself is a malnourish then likely complication could be prematurity iugr and so many other complication then active married life of how many years that is also important in reference to the infertility if she has undergone any kind of infertility treatment and there is a multiple gestation then we are we may have a issue with the multiple pregnancies gravida para live pregnancy and abortion this is also very important why because if abortion is more if she is having a many abortion which has occurred in first trimester then there are few things which has to be kept in a mind and first and foremost is intrauterine infection if she is she is a grand multipara grand multipara means more than four pregnancy then likely complication in the baby could be iugr and prematurity first and foremost history as a part of obstetric history is lmp and edt So first of all we need to know LMP so what is LMP and what is EDD you must be thinking why it is important for us we are taking a history of newborn but this is very important because in a first slide we decided that the maturity of child is always decided by the week of gestation and week of gestation we are going to count by last menstrual period take an example if the LMP of my patient is a 1st February 22 right then what will be the edd it is called negles formula in which we need to add 7 days and 9 months so it would be 8 november 22 right now this is edd is counted on 40 weeks of completed pregnancy do not get confused many a times many students give answer that edd at 37 weeks no it is at 40 weeks of the completed gestational age suppose this baby is born on 16th of november right then what would be the gestational age of my baby it's 41 weeks and suppose this baby is born on 1st then 1st november then it would be 39 weeks this is the way we count the lmp edd as well as the gestational age of the baby so this two is very important if you are having any confusion please rewind the video and watch it then we need to know blood group and rh rh of the mother because if the mother is rh negative and if father is rh positive then there could be a chances of the rh isoimmunization in the baby and we may have a pathological jaundice in newborn whether she is registered case of an angadwadi or not this is very important in context whether she has taken a complete antenatal care or not and nowadays it is very important to have a registered uh, a maternal cases because so angadwadi worker or asha, asha worker can trace the mother for antenatal treatment number of the antenatal visit what complaint she has she she was having one in, investigation she has undergone and what medication she has received so basically antenatal care is a 
कम्बिनेशन ऑफ द हिस्ट्री एग्जामिनेशन इन्वेस्टिगेशन एंड मैनेजमेंट विच इज ऑफर्ड टू द एंटीनेटल मदर्स एंटीनेटल लेडीज एंड दिस ऑल केयर इज अ वेरी मच इम्पॉर्टेंट बिकॉज इफ दिस ऑल आर डन प्रॉपरली we know that this lady has taken a proper antenatal care she is absolutely fine she can have her baby at a, a primary health center or a community health center but among this if we find any kind of red flag suppose multiple gestation or suppose she is having hypertension then th- this lady has to be referred to the higher center where the care of the expectant female as well as the newborn could be done properly so this is not for anything else this is very important as a part of history because it will give a indication regarding the high risk pregnancies chronic maternal history are also important because tobacco alcohol and substance abuse can give some of the complication in the fetus like alcohol can cause fetal alcohol syndrome anti conversion anti coagulant also will have a issue with the babies like phenytoin can cause uh, fetal phenytoin syndrome and previous complication of pregnancy so this compiles the antenatal history it is a very long list but it is very important for us to ask now what is intranatal history first of all intranatal periods starts from the onset of labor till the delivery of the placenta so during this period anything else has happened to the baby has to be asked first and foremost whether she has a premature onset of labor pain or not need to be asked because premature onset of labor pain is a one of the very important cause for the premature labor premature rupture of neighbor prolonged premature prolonged rupture of membrane membrane what is a prolonged rupture of membrane if the rupture of membrane occurs before the 18 hours of the delivery then it is called prolonged rupture if it is more than 24 hours of the delivery then we can suspect prolonged rupture of membrane is when when the delivery of when the rupture of membrane occurs anywhere before the 18 hours of the delivery of the baby whenever there is a rupture of the membrane of the amniotic cavity what will happen the ascending bacteria will cause infection to the baby so there is a chance of newborn or neonatal sepsis because those are the bacteria of normal vaginal tract of the lady which will travel up for giving infection to the baby if the time is prolonged so if it is more than 24 hours it is really very significant we need to start antibiotic to the baby and we have to subject baby for the newborn sepsis screening and if it turns to out to be positive then as per protocol we have to give antibiotic to the baby so what are the other risk factor if mother is having a fever a urinary tract infection or a foul smelling rhicor that is a sign of chorioamnitis then also there is a chances that baby may have a newborn sepsis fetal distress means uh, it is depending on the biological profile it means if there is a meconium stain rhicor or there is a decreased fetal movement or a fetal bradycardia or a fetal tachycardia or there will be early or late deceleration which is there in a fetal monitoring device then it means the fetal is in distress and the early delivery by either if the uh, already second stage has started then could be instrumental extraction or it could be a cesarean section amniotic fluid volume like polyhydramnios and uh, oligohydramnios also to be kept in mind because polyhydramnios many a times associated with many congenital abnormality lies tracheoesophageal fistula or esophageal atresia narcotics if taken within 4 hours of delivery then the baby may have a issue with the consciousness and there can be a chances of neonatal encephalopathy if the mother has been received a general anesthesia those could pass to the baby and there could be a chances of uh, drug related arousal problems intranatal history a very important point is a method of method of del- uh, mode of delivery if it is a vaginal route it's fine we have already asked further question which is explained in the previous slide if it is a cesarean section then definitely we need to ask the cesarean section was done for the fetal indication or maternal indication for example if cesarean section is done for the maternal indication like placenta previa 
then we should not be that much concerned but if it is done for the fetal con if it is con it is done for the fetal interest like a meconium stain like a cord, cord prolapse or a fetal distress in the first stage of li- labor then we should suspect a birth asphyxia or a hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy in the baby so indication of seizure is very important in a neonatology because half of the clues are going to be there in this question instrumental instrumentation is done in a second stage of the labor due to various indication a commonest indication is if the baby is having fetal distress and mother is already in the second stage that is the, she is having a fully dilatation of the cervix then we can think of vacuum assisted delivery but this is purely obgyn thing but instrumentation has to be asked because suppose it is a vacuum extraction then we need to be very much vigilant about birth trauma or a shoulder dystocia after the this many thing the first and foremost thing once the baby is there it's a crying baby is pleasure for everyone not only for mother for pediatrician as well as gynecologist so first of all we need to notice the time of delivery and it is a common practice that once the baby's head is out the attending nurse will always always shout the time as well as the gender of the baby we need to record the birth weight of the baby and we need to write whether the baby cried immediately after birth or not or cried after some sort of neonatal resuscitation so it has to be mentioned in the birth record sheet because there could be a this could all in reference to the presence of asphyxia and so on many complication could be found postnatal history is also very important because we should know that after the birth how child was like nowadays it is rule to start a feeding within 30 minutes of the normal delivery and within 1 hour of the cesarean section so whether feeding was started appropriately or not whether breastfeeding was after initiation was given frequently every 2 to 3 hours on demand baby was trying and sucking well on the breast this has to be asked as a part of feeding history one more important thing which has to be asked is a prelactial feed prelactial feed is any other feed which is apart from breast milk is given to the baby is called prelactial feed it could be jaggery water patasha water honey water but it should be completely banned not to be given but it does not only cause feeding feeding problems but it can cause any, many other problems like newborn sepsis and so on hypoglycemia so this all practice should be avoided and passage of urine and stool it is very important a newborn baby pass stool within 24 hours of the life if baby does not pass stool within 24 hours of the life it could be a part of imperforated anus if the baby is having a any kind of issue with the obstructive uropathy then the urine passage could be delayed if the baby does not pass urine within 48 hours of the life it is called delayed passage of the urine and in this situation we need to keep in a mind there could be a dehydration there could be a obstructive uropathy and there could be any other cause related to urinary system so till 48 hours we have to reassure the parents we have to uh, make sure that child is feeding well on the breast child is not having any sign of dehydration or fever then reassurance should be provided to the parents after taking a postnatal history we need to mention a maternal past history whether she is a known case of thalassemia rvd or a, a hypertension or a tuberculosis this has to be asked and has to be mentioned because many a time if the mother is having a active tuberculosis then we need to give a tuberculosis prophylaxis to newborn so this is also very important we need to ask history of transfusion and rest of the other major uh, medical disorders family history to be asked similar context if the family member is having any major illness suppose in a family a uh, maternal brother is having a his- history of bleeding tendency then we need to think hemophilia in our mind so family history has to be asked sibling history that all babies in the family if the mother is not a primary gravidian and she has other child then we need to ask that other kids are doing well other children are fine they are developmentally okay this has all to be asked to the mother in reference to the sibling history immunization history of baby 
like if we are having a baby who, who is 3 days 4 days old then we need to ask about history of bcg as well as opv and hepatitis b so whether it has been taken or not has to be mentioned in our information parent patient information sheet so did this conclude a uh, newborn history the part 2 of this neonatology will be uh, examination of the newborn I hope you all understood and learned well. I have given a pro forma also. So it would be very easy for you to now take a newborn history and you will be very much clear in your mind. The minute detail may vary from institute to institute but basic detail is going to remain same. Please let me know what else you would like to learn from me. Your suggestions are always welcome for, for the improvement of my topics and channel. Till that time, take care of yourself, study hard, study smart, bye.